Morning, I hope you're keeping safe. If I'd sent you this video a week ago when I first said I was going to do it, it would have been done. It would have been so different to the video that I'm recording today. Last Wednesday lunchtime, I sent out a video saying that I was going to be filming a Discovery Day session, and the purpose behind a Discovery Day is to answer all the questions that you may have about proceeding with a Cloud James Tutoring franchise. And the reason I was going to be videoing it was because with the impact of coronavirus at that stage it was started to be recommended that people shouldn't meet in large groups. Wednesday evening when I was in one of my when I was in my second lesson I had um, the parents came in at the end of it and announced that schools were going to be closed as of Monday and I think from that moment on everything has changed considerably and then it all changed again on Monday when it was announced that the country was going to go into lockdown. So, so if I'd filmed this as I'd planned to last Wednesday, the presentation would have been like this. And then if I'd done it again over the weekend when I'd anticipated, the presentation I'm about to give to you would have been like this. However, now we're back on Wednesday and life has changed once again and so has the business. And so the presentation I'm going to be presenting to you is completely different. If you have any questions or anything, please do drop me an email or we can have a phone, telephone conversation and I will do my very best to answer any of your questions. So. so let me begin by introducing myself. I'm Dawn from Clara James Tutoring and I set up the business back in 2012. And my background had always been working with children in early years and special educational needs. I'd worked as an MVQ assessor, I'd worked with autistic children, I'd worked in early year settings, um, I'd worked in creches, I'd worked as a childminder. Every, but everything I'd ever learnt told me that children learn best when they're relaxed and children learn best when the lesson's interactive, whether that was with a 16-year-old autistic child or whether that was with a three-year-old in a playgroup. And so... So as well as working in a variety of child care and educational places, I also um, I also studied a diploma in preschool practice, and then I went on and um, studied for a degree in child care and education through the Open University. And everything I learnt implied that children learn best when learning is interactive and when the child is relaxed. And then when my oldest daughter Clara started secondary school, I came to the conclusion that she might be slightly dyslexic she could write something and verbally she came across as very bright but when you looked at her spellings it looked like it was done by a lot and far younger child she could write the same word two or three different ways on the same piece of paper and not notice that there was a mis any mistakes there and so um my mum noticed a course in the local and free newspaper for supporting children with reading spelling difficulties so I went along and as part of that course we had to put together a, a case study on a child and um, and so I chose Clara and at the end of the course I presented it to the tutor and said what do you think about her being dyslexic and she said well, it's definitely worth having a word with the school to see what they say so I went into the school and said here's my case study here's my evidence is it possible that she could be dis um, is it possible that she could be tested for dyslexia and at the time she's 24 now so we're going back a good 15 years a dyslexia was still seen as an excuse and because she was at the time a very quiet child the idea and not giving the teacher any trouble the idea was instantly dismissed so i didn't have the confidence back then to kind of say but i think this is something we ought to look into so i kind of thought okay if you're not willing to help her yourself, if you're not willing to help her, so over the coming years I studied and learned as much as I could about learning difficulties and dyslexia and learning styles. And so everything I've then in 2012 I was on a college course with the intention of being able to go back into a classroom and work with adults when um when one of the other ladies there that I became friends with suggested I had to go at tutoring. And at first I wasn't keen on the idea because I, I'd i been working, I'd built up a successful childminding business when the divorce went through and as part of the divorce I lost the house 
And so my childminding business had evaporated. And the prospect of going back to working with children and um, having my own business didn't appeal. But the more she talks about it and the enthusiasm she had for the job, the more I kind of felt, actually, this is something I'd really like to give a go. So in February 2012, the kids went up to their dad's house for dinner one Sunday evening. And I sat myself down at the computer and I wrote my first profile as a tutor and pressed click and go. And that was it. The profile basically said for the last eight years, I've been working in childcare and educational settings. And this was the experience that I had. I'd also got an interest with working with. I also had an interest in dyslexia and autism. And and a friend and I sat and brainstormed the things that we would expect from a tutor if we were having a tutor for our own child. So instead of looking at it as many people do, how can I make the most money? We kind of, what would the best teacher, what would the best tutor offer? And what would we expect from a tutor for our own child? So that was basically the fundamental building blocks from which the business is growing. Within six months, there was more work than I could handle individually, so I started to take on other tutors to work with me. But at that time, the business was known as, known as Star Tutoring, and I worked more as an agency. A, a, a parent would ring up and say, I need a science tutor for my child, and say, well, it's not something I could help you with personally, but I know this person that could help, and gave them a bit of a background on that person. And at that time, um, my son was doing his A-levels and for some reason he'd missed a lesson. So one of the tutors which I was recommending said that he supported economics. So I gave him a ring and said, would he be willing to spend an hour with Jamie working on um, this specific subject? So, yep, yep, that's fine. He would charge £50 an hour plus travel and um, he arranged the day, the time and everything. And when he turned up, all he had with him was a pen. And he came in and he sat down and he said to Jamie, right, what would you like to talk about? And Jamie said, this was what it was. OK, so what do you know about it? And again, Jim and Jamie said, nothing. I missed that lesson. And the whole focus of the hour's lesson was this tutor trying to get out of Jamie what he knew about the subject. But the problem was because he'd missed that specific lesson, he didn't actually have any knowledge. And so for £50 an hour... You have no preparation or anything. As a parent, I kind of felt a bit disgruntled. But I also felt I've been recommending this person to someone. And if it gets back to people that this is a sort of level of quality that I think is acceptable, then it's going to damage my reputation overnight. At the same time, my youngest daughter was doing her GCSEs. And although she's very, very clever, I wanted her to spend an hour with someone a week just... Um, revising science it was something I couldn't help her with but at least that way I knew she'd be getting a concentrated hour at least of revision of science revision each week and it turned out that this tutor was just sat reading to her from a textbook and then at the, when they reached the bottom of the page he would ask her the questions and she would answer them you can't, and again as a parent you can't think well that's something I could do myself with her so at that stage, I said, right, OK, I'm not recommending any more tutors. I worked hard to build up this, build up this reputation. And so um, I went back to trying to do it all myself. When Jamie then finished his A-levels, he announced that he was going to go to Australia for a year. And it's surprising how a comment like that can make you realise how much your kids are growing up and how quickly they're growing up. So I thought, well, actually... I don't want to be working doing this seven days a week. But the amount of work which was coming in dictated at that time that I had to. So I, I once again went back to taking on other tutors. But this time I made sure that they were employed. And I took the attitude that this, as an employee, this is my expectations and this is how we do things. You can, if you're willing to do things my way, then great I think we'll work well together but if you've got your own way of doing things which doesn't complement mine then basically this isn't the job for you and since then the business has gone from strength to strength when I've spoken to other parents about stories they've heard of tutors and what different parents are receiving from the tutor that has worked previously with their child or a friend's child or something I've always felt that we were offering a far 
this sounds big-headed, but a far more superior service. And um, I, I believe that if a parent is wanting a tutor, then they should have certain expectations and be delivered, and those expectations should be delivered upon. So at the beginning of last year, we decided to franchise the business, and we had our ups and downs. We had to change the company name from Star Tutoring, which was my maiden name, to Clara James Tutoring because I couldn't trademark Star because it was so too similar to someone else's name. Um, there are other things along the way, but we made it happen. At the beginning of this year, we were nominated for a National Implementation Award because of the hard work we'd done. And then, but until that point, the work we'd always delivered was was tailor-made one-to-one tutoring in the comfort of the child's own home. But obviously, this last week, with the country going into lockdown, we've had to adapt and grow. And so now we still do tailor-made one-to-one tutoring. We still provide the very best service that we can. But we now also offer an online service, which means going forward, when we come out the other side of this, which we inevitably will do, we're going to be able to offer a two-tier service going forward. We're going to be able to offer an online service but also a, a premier package, if you like, where we will travel to you and tutor your child within the comfort of your own home. Although how we do things has changed, we still aim to offer the very best tutoring that we can. And learners can will still learn in the comfort of their own home. It's just these days, the comfort of their own home may be if the tutor physically sat beside them, or it may be that the tutor will be online or it may be that the tutor is talking to them over an online platform. But our goal is to provide this support to children in every corner of the United Kingdom. But more than anything, we want to stand out from the crowd because of the reputation that, that we have of the quality of the service that we provide. When, everyone gets, whenever anyone gets in touch, our goal is to make them feel that we know what we're talking about and we genuinely want to help them. We want them to know that they're not just a statistic that will help us raise our bottom line. So when I was doing the, when I was doing the due diligence for franchising like our James, I met a franchisee of another big franchising company and I, I was lucky enough to be able to go with him to meet a family that were looking for a tutor. Their boy was in primary school. He was autistic, but he was going to be suspended because he had assaulted a teacher. And um, I went along with the franchisee and it was incredible. He had no knowledge about education whatsoever. It was very much a case that he was there to get you to sign the form so that you would commit to having a tutor. Then once you'd made that commitment, he would find a tutor to talk to them about and they that tutor could then offer them advice whereas my goal is that every franchisee is trained by us to an extent that when a parent gets in touch they have the ability and the knowledge to be able to answer basic questions so they could explain to the family the sort of resources we use the way we do things why we do things that way and they can answer initial concerns and show that we genuinely are here to help and the reason I want to do it like this is because it's this attitude which has taken Clara James tutoring from strength to strength and it's this passion to be a genuine assistant which has got us this far and I believe will help us grow stronger and stronger in the future. Sat here doing this now, it's just giving me a thought. At the weekend, I was supposed to be on a three-day celebrity summit where there was going to be David Williams, Peter Jones the Dragon, um, Piers Morgan, and a whole range of other celebrities there giving advice and information. But obviously, because of the coronavirus, that's had to be cancelled. So what they've done instead was on Tuesday. So on Tuesday, they did a virtual training day. And... Um, they, something they often talk about at the EC is the banana rama syndrome. It ain't what you do, it's the way that you do it. And I believe that's probably the case with a lot of tutors. Most tutors are fundamentally supporting the same areas, if it's maths or English or whatever. It's just the way that you present it is what will make you different and make you stand out. So... 
So for example, if we were working with a child doing phonics, we might have a game of bingo. So we'd each have a board and then on the board would be written words starting with that specific sound. And then we'd take it in turns to pick up a picture. And if that picture, well, we'd play it one of two ways. You could either play the kind version or the mean version. If you play in the kind version and it's not my picture, it's yours, I would hand it to you and you'd put it on your board and the first person to complete the board is the winner. Or if you're playing the mean version, this picture would be put back in amongst the others and um, you have to try and find it yourself and it's your go. Alternatively, we might play a pairs game so you'd have all the words and all the pictures spread out in front of you and you have to pick up two and if it's a corresponding word and picture, you keep it and have another go. If it's um, a word and a picture which don't match, then you put them back on the table and the other person has a go. Uh, going forward, if we were doing it as an online lesson, bingo probably wouldn't be as practical, but you could still do the pairs games. What you do is you blue tack it to a board and then um, they would get to, say, top row, third along and bottom row, third along or something. And then they're the two. If it matched, they would get that pair on their pile. If it didn't, I had um, a lesson with a lad this morning. He's 11. Um, he's got ADHD and dyslexia. Really, really lovely lad. But what we did, we were working coincidentally on the F sound. And um, we had to think of as many words as we could that started with the F sound. So it could be PH or it could be F. And we had to think of it and then draw the picture. Sorry, I can't draw, but draw the picture and then write the correct word with the correct spelling next to it. Um, and he seemed to really enjoy that. And we also had, um, we also played Hangman. Um, so things can be adapted quite easily to play online. If we were doing maths, you're probably thinking, yes, that's okay with younger children, but what happens if we're working with older children? Well, well, what we might do is say it's a year 11 child that's doing their GCSEs. We might work through a past paper. And then when we get to, as we're doing the paper, we'd pull out the things which they were less confident with. And then we might play games such as, I apologise, this is an old one, but as snakes and ladders. And on each square, you've got a different question. And each time you land on the square, um, you answer the question that's there. Or we might have... Again, we might do knots and crosses, so you draw the knots and crosses grid, and again, on each square, you'd put a different question. And if you want to claim that square, you have to answer the question in... You'd have to answer the question which is written on there, and they'd all be associated with the thing which the child was struggling with. And then at the end of it, we may work through something like this, just to prove, or just to acknowledge the fact that now they are more confident with it. So as, go, as we go through papers in the future they're now more confident with. And the idea, is, the idea is by playing lots of different games, each time you do something, you create a memory. So if you do something once, such as do a work, worksheet, you create one memory, but it's quite a flimsy memory. If you do the similar sort of thing twice, and you create, you're making that memory stronger, but your brain has still only got one place to go to in your mind to try and find the information that it needs. Whereas if you're creating different activities... Whereas if you're doing different activities, each time you do something different, you're creating different memories. So, for example, if we were to play the fishing game, the snakes and ladders game, and um, a pairs game, that's three different memories. So now your brain has three different places to go to to find the information that it needs. And so it's far more likely that you're going to be able to recall the information when you need it, especially if you're in the stress situation of an exam or a test or something. So that's why, in a nutshell, we use a different so many different resources in order to learn rather than just relying on the repetition of worksheets. There's a, there's a few different things we've done with creative writing. For example, sometimes we may just have a picture or something to be descri described. But what we'd try and do is we'd perhaps start by playing battleships or something. And so um, what we'd do is think of five words to describe that picture and then you put them into a battleship's grid, and um, we then use coordinates to try and find the other person's words. Or we might play create a word search for the other person to solve using the words which were um, used to describe that picture. Or um, we may just do an A to Z of try and, and try and think of different words like that. 
So, and so by doing something like that, it just gets the brain generating ideas before you actually have to put pen to paper because there's nothing harder than someone giving you a blank piece of paper and saying, right, now you need to write that. And your brain just goes down blank. It's like if someone says to you, what do you want to talk about? Okay. Um, have you any questions? Um, whereas if you're given that kind of like initial opening activity, it just helps the brain get started and it makes the actual writing easier. And it also means that when they've written two or three sentences and now I don't know what's right, you can kind of like say, well, have you used this word? Have you used that word? Um, so there's different things like that we could do. Um, what, on quite a few occasions, what we've done is I've given them a pack of cards and I've asked them to create a house of cards where you stack the uh, triangle, the cards in triangles. We'd have three across the bottom, then the la flat layer, then two, flat layer, then one. And then the frustration and the feelings that they feel while they're trying to create this card and then the words that they would use to create and write their piece of creative writing. So it's all about trying to make it a bit more interesting, a bit more stimulating. And, the, and because we work with so many children who have got some form of specific learning difficulty, it just makes it more interesting. And if they have ADHD, you can't rely on their than being able to concentrate on one task for an, an hour. So you need to break it down into more creative, active chunks so that they are able to keep their focus easier. Especially now things are going to be more online because it's going to be harder to capture their attention if you're not physically sat there with them. I've come to love comprehension. What we do is we have a comprehension board game. So say you're yellow, I'll be red blues forfeits if anyone lands on the yellow square you have to and um, you have to read a page paragraph whatever's appropriate if anyone lands on a red square I would have to read a page a paragraph or whatever's appropriate and if anyone lands on the blue square then they have to do one of the forfeits which might be something like have another go or um, have another go read another page go back three spaces go forward four spaces or whatever but that way it breaks up the per the onus from one person having to do all the reading and then what we do is so for example at the beginning of I love David Williams at the beginning of Billionaire Boy it says bear with me meet Joe Spud have you ever wondered what it would be like to have a million pounds or a billion how about a trezillion or even a gazillion meet Joe Spud and then what we do with that page is have A to Z and you have to try and think of um, one one thing starting with each letter of the alphabet that you would buy or invest in if you had a million pounds, a billion pounds, trillion pounds, whatever. Or at the beginning of the twits, it describes Mr. Twit and all the food he has stuck in his beard. So what I've done is I've made those into the different food items into anagrams and the child has to, sometimes using Scrabble letters to help them, but rearrange the letters to make the, find out what the words are. Or I might ask them to... There's a pic, uh, description of Mrs. Tritt. I might ask them to draw a picture of her as they envisage her from what they've read and then label it accordingly using quotes from the book. And some of you will be thinking, mm, again, that's OK with younger children, but what happens if we're working with the older children? Well, we've done a similar thing with Dr. Jekyll, sorry, Miss, Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde, Romeo and Juliet, etc. And Inspector Calls, Animal Farm, etc. So what we might do is for example in uh, Jekyll and Hyde there's a description of Dr Jekyll's laboratory so I might ask them to draw the laboratory and then label it with quotes that are in the book to describe it because what you'll find is although this is more language and these are obviously for the literature in the language questions you have a piece of text and you have to draw four fact or draw out four facts from that so it might say from lines one to six, what do you learn about the setting? What do you learn about the character? So by doing this, they remember, they've got a visual aid for when they come to revise, but they've also got the, the but they're also developing the skills for their language paper. So it's kind of like a double a double achievement. So or but something else we might be doing is um, for a, another example might be in Animal Farm. There's the phrase which is often repeated. Um, Two le four legs bad, two legs good. So what you might do is write, write the phrase and then you have to try and make as many words as you can 
by using just those letters in that phrase. I did this yesterday with a lad online. It was from David Williams' Ice Monster, and the phrase was something along the lines of, I beg to differ. And I think between us, we came up with about 60 different words just using those few letters. So in this instance, you'd be um, working on building their vocabulary at the same time as doing the literacy task. So a lot of the things will kind of complement different areas as well. If you did decide to join us as a franchisee, you'd be given quite a, a wide range of promotional materials that you would be able to use. And some of this would be whenever we go to someone for the first time, we always provide a starter pack. And in that starter pack would have everything that the child's going to need for the lessons. So um, you, there'd be a couple of Clara Jones tutoring pens. I don't show very well, sorry, in here. Um, we've got personalised. We've got personalised pencil cases, um, and there's other the pencils and things like that as well. I won't go through it all now because if I bore you with absolutely everything, then you're going to turn off. But um, so the, one of the reasons we do this is going back to Jamie. When he was doing his GCSEs, he used to play a lot of rugby. And in the a scrum, he di dislocated his shoulder. And although they popped it back in at the game, afterwards it kept for a week. So he was able to do a party trick where he was able to keep popping it back in and out. And um, in the end, they tried physio and things. And the hospital said they'd have to operate. But that was literally two weeks before the Easter holidays where he would have set his exams. And this was when I was very new to tutoring and I still had a full time job elsewhere. And um, the lady that got me into tutoring came and spent some time with him. And I was at work when she arrived and Jamie just about managed to get himself out of bed. And when she arrived, she didn't have a pen or paper or anything with her. So from what I gathered, they had spent the first half hour of the lesson trying to find the resources and things that he, he could use. And as a parent, you can't think, oh, OK, I should have had them prepared, but I presume she would have had the stuff with her that she was going to need. So now what we do is whenever we get to a lesson for our first time is hand over to the child a starter pack and say, look, this is for you. It's everything that we're going to need. Very often by the second lesson, it's gone. You're never going to see it again. But some families do hang on to it. And it just make a it makes you look professional. It's always nice to receive a gift. And also, a lot of these kids don't want tutors. They're being given tutors because it's an area they're struggling in. So by handing over a gift, it helps to break the ice before you get started. And the other thing is, very often, a pen will get left lying around or it'll get put into the school pencil case and it has your details on it. It then gets seen by someone else and it's a very easy, cheap way of promoting your business without very, with very, very little effort at all. So... Um, those are some of the, there are a couple of the promotional materials in that respect that you'd be given. But also, you'll also be given some magnets to put on the side of your car. They're old ones because it's they're old ones because it's not something I've done for a while because we've had more work than we can cope with coming in already. But I found that having those magnets on the side of the car has generated an awful lot of money over the years. For example, um, I think we worked it out that it was six year, five, five and a half years ago now I started going to tutor this girl. And one night I was parked on their drive and the mum came into the kitchen where we were working and said, I'm going out with friends in a minute, but her dad's here and he'll say goodbye to you when you leave. And um, the next day I got two phone calls. The mum had been out for dinner with two friends and They'd seen the magnets on the side of my car and they'd got talking about the tutoring and the mum had said how great it was going and how much they'd, her daughter enjoyed doing it. And so the next day, both those friends phoned to find out details and see if I could help them tutor with, with their sons. And so one of those, five and a half years later, I'm still working with the younger brother. Um, but also the work that they, between those three families, they must have recommended between them at least a dozen more families. And so once again, it's a very easy, effective way of promoting your business at very little cost. Um, there's also been times where I've been filling up the car at the local petrol station and someone once come across and said, have you got a card on you, please, so I can get in touch about tutoring. Um, there was one day I parked the car in 
the uh, shopping centre car park and as I was walking back to the car to put the ticket in it, a lady came up and said, can I have the details, please? And I didn't hear anything again for over a year. And then suddenly I got a phone call out the blue from her. They'd had to move up to Yorkshire because of her husband's work, but they were now back in town and they wanted support with her for her oldest daughter that was doing her GCSEs. So although sometimes these things don't come to fruition straight away, it's amazing the no the snowball effect they can have by just one or two people seeing them. Okay, this is probably the thing that you're most interested in, and that's what could you earn if you did become a Clara James Tutoring franchisee. Okay, the figures I'm going to give you now are, come bef uh, are potential earnings before any of your expenses. So we're go going forward after the coronavirus and life starts to return to normal, we're going to have a two-tiered effect. We're going to have the premier tier where we would travel to the parent or to the family's house and at the moment we charge £35 an hour for that though we might be looking to put it up to 40 but going on the £35 an hour if you were to work with 10 students a week for just one hour each you would be looking at £1,400 a month so that's just 10 hours work a week if you were to work with 20 students for one hour each each week at £35 an hour, you would double that income to £2,800 a month. And if you were to push it a bit further and work th with 30 students per week for one hour each at £35 an hour, you could potentially earn £4,200 a month. In addition to that, you will probably find that there will be too much work for you to do yourself, so you may want to take on additional tutors. At the moment, in this area, we should pay £22 an hour for each tutor. So that would mean that if you're working on the £35 an hour rate, you would earn £13 from every hour that the other tutors worked. So going forward, we are going to be offering an online service as well. And at the moment, we are expecting to charge £25 an hour. So again using the same statistics as before if you were to work with 10 students each week so just 10 hours work at 25 pound an hour each you would have an income of a thousand pound a month so 10 hours a week would be a thousand pound a month if you were to double that and work with 20 students a week at 25 pound an hour that would be a total of two thousand pound a month and again 30 students a week at 25 pound an hour you'd be looking at three thousand pound a month but the thing to remember here is although these figures aren't as big, you don't have any travel expenses involved. And once again, you could also have income from other tutors coming in. I've worked these expenses out from my own experience, and I've been doing this for about eight years now. So I spend on a normal week when I'm out and about tutoring, and I work roughly 32 hours a week as a tutor. And my radius is quite large because when I started, we lived in a town 10 miles away and then we moved here. And so I still have students in my old town and I also have students in this town. So I do quite a bit of running backwards and forwards. But I drive a, a 1.4 litre Corsa, so my car's nothing flash. But I pay roughly £45 a week in petrol. I'm not sure how many hours, but I'm not sure how many miles I actually do, but... It works out roughly between 40 and 45 pound a week in petrol. I spend, again, this is when I'm working in the physical environment and I have to print everything out. I spend roughly 10 pound a week on stationery. And each week there would be 62 pound 50 to pay, which would be, that we would use here at head office to promote your business in your area. So it might be things like Facebook ads, Google ads. We might deliver you some, or we might send you some leaflets for you to deliver. We might send you new magnets with new adverts on the side or something. So every single penny of that would be put into your marketing spend for you in your area to help you promote your business. If you wanted to grow your business faster, you could obviously do your own marketing, which we would support you with. And the budget for that is obviously at your discretion. You may not decide not to do it at all, in which case your business isn't going to grow as quickly. Or... You may decide to put, set aside this amount each week and use that. And then there's also obviously the franchise fee, which works out at £37.50 a week. 
there are three options, but I've also got a special offer for you while we are in lockdown. But once we come out of lockdown, the territories are split up into three different sizes. And the size of the territory that you purchase will dictate the cost of the franchise. So franchises start at 9995 plus VAT, so roughly 10,000 plus VAT. The size of the territory that you cover will dictate um, how much the franchise will actually cost. What support will you get? I've actually written um, a blog article, which I will send you a copy of, so which goes into the support that we'll give you far more. But these are just kind of like some of the some of the key parts. Because again, if I jabber one for too long, then you're going to get bored and go. But we will be here to give you support in setting and reaching your targets through knowing your numbers. If you know what your income is and you know what your expenses are going to be, it's going to be far easier to build a strong business. We will support you with market. We'll then we'll support you with marketing your franchise. We'll give you advice on resources and how to structure a lesson, basically everything that you would need to do to prepare for a lesson and implement that lesson. You will be given the support you need to. Any concerns that you have about the safety or well-being of a child, again, we'll be here to support you. If you do decide to take on other tutors, either to support the work that you do as a tutor, stroke franchisee, or instead of you being a tutor, then we'll give you support in recruiting them. We'll give you advice on what to do if parents don't pay you for any reason. We'll give you support on staffing issues and much, much more. There'll also be training days and an annual dinner where we'll announce the annual awards. So, so in order to build a strong business, if you can say that you're an award winner, it's going to do your promotion. Your, it was going to make it far easier for you to promote yourself in the last couple of years. We've been nominated as finalists for Best Customer Service um, in 2018 and 2019. And then, like I said earlier, we were again nominated in the National Awards for the Implementation Awards. So something needs doing, we will get it done, is basically what that award was for. But sadly now, because of the coronavirus, they're not going to be announcing the winners till September. So whether we win it or not, I don't know. But we work hard and we will do our very best to help you grow as well. At the end of the year, we'll also look not just at your financial targets, but also your personal targets and what you would need to do as an individual to help your business grow enough to meet those targets. So whether it's a holiday somewhere, whether it's new car or uh, move to somewhere different, whatever it is, we'll look at what you would need to do to achieve that. And during the first year, we're also going to pay for your membership to the Entrepreneur Circle. I've mentioned them before. They are amazing, and I know without their help, we wouldn't be in the position that we are with the business today. They specialise in marketing, and and the resources that they have available, and the Facebook group, and the amount of knowledge that they have within that group is amazing. All these different business people coming together, sharing ideas and thoughts, and like I say, we wouldn't be in the situation we were in today if it hadn't been for the support we've had from them. And a really important note to make is that for the first three months, there will be no fees to pay. So you won't have the franchise fee and you won't have the marketing fee. So for three months, you won't have any of that to pay for. And we'll also support you in getting your first 120 hours worth of tutoring. Depending if and when you decide you want to go ahead with this, we'll also have a five-day training course in Ellsbury, which is here in Buckinghamshire, where you'll have your accommodation refreshments throughout the day, breakfast, lunch and dinner provided. The only things that you'd be responsible for paying for while you're there are your travel to and from the venue and any alcoholic drinks that you consume. We'll give you guys soft drinks, tea, coffee, fruit juice, whatever, but if you want alcohol with your evening meal, then obviously that would be at your discretion to pay for it. At that initial training day in Aylesbury, we'll give you the comprehensive startup packs, and that would involve, that would include uh, an A3 printer. It's always used to be an A4 printer, but going forward, if we're going to be doing things more online, like 
the board game that I showed you or snakes and ladders boards or whatever it'll be far easier to hold them up or prop them up for the person at the other end of the camera to see if it's larger if it's larger it'll also make it easier for the other person to see what's actually written on it so we're going to mature from providing A4 printers and move on to moving A3 printers just because we are going to be needing to do a lot more virtually like this. And obviously along with that printer you'll be given the ink that it needs and any paper. We'll also provide you with a laminator and pouches and the reason that we laminate things is because the reason we laminate things is because when I found that if we take along, say, a snakes and ladders board and it's not laminated, it because it's just um, comes across like a piece of paper, younger children especially will start drawing on extra snakes and ladders and before the end of the lesson that game's now ruined and can't be used again. Whereas if it's laminated, they can't draw on it and so it lasts a lot longer and also it gets less crumpled in your bag. And also it's been like sticking counters on here over the last couple of days. The games which are laminated like this, use I just press this blue tack on the back of the counter and I can move it around quite easily. Whereas the games which I haven't laminated, they're getting quite badly creased where I've been trying to push on and pull off the counters. So that's why I would recommend laminating a lot of the resources that you use. We would also give you there's a whole lot more that we would give you, but in addition, we'd also give you three tutors packs for any tutors that you do decide to employ. We'd give you eight student packs to get you going, 100 business cards and a thousand flyers, a set of card magnets with your personal details on to promote your personal franchise. The startup fee also includes three months of Google ads and Facebook ads to the total of £1,000. Uh, you'd also be given the training manuals, which includes descriptions for the games, how to promote, how to produce them, how to play them, etc. You'll be given your own dedicated landing page and email address from the company website. We'll set you up with Google Maps, which will help you appear in local searches. And you'll, learn, and you'll also have your own official local Clara James Tutoring Facebook page, which is brilliant to help you raise your lo local profile. Any DBS, we'll get your DBS check carried out for you and we'll also subsidise any DBS checks that you need to get done for other tutors that you want to employ and the cost of that will just be £20. However, having said that, the price of that will be renewed annually as they increase their fees. At the initial training, we'd go through everything that you would need to know to grow a successful business. So we would go through things like marketing. So we would cover things like dyslexia, autism, marketing, when the parent gets in touch, what you'd need to say, what you'd need to say when you went to visit them, how you'd plan a lesson for them, how you'd find tutors, how you'd actually create the resources for that lesson regardless of the age and ability and we would also support you with implementing that lesson and then getting feedback afterwards and the systems that we use for all of those things. So that's what would be covered at the initial five day event then. Going forward, like I said, I've written a blog on this, which I'll send to you, which explains all the support we give you. But we would be here every step of the way to hold your hand and give you the support that you need. I've mentioned some of the things like the I've mentioned some of the things like setting your targets, both personal and business. I've mentioned some of the things like the awards and that. But like I say, I'll, I'll send you a copy of the blog and that'll give you a lot more detail on the support that we would give you going forward after the discovery day sorry, after the initial training, but the main thing I want you to know is one of the things which has helped us build the business is we have always done our very, very best for the children that we work with, and I feel that as a franchisee, you deserve that same quality of service and support, so anything at all that we could do for you at any stage, we will be here to help you, because the more successful you are, the more you'll promote us, and the more successful we'll become, and the more successful we are, the more we we'll have the ability to support you going forward. So our goal is to make you, so our goal is to support you in having the very, very best tutoring business that you possibly could. Like I've just said, when I started tutoring, my goal was to offer the best support that I humanly could. I just come out of a bad divorce and I was afraid of being seen as a failure. I want, 
I want to take that same fear of failure now and make sure that you receive all the help that you would need to grow your tutoring business. Obviously, we can't do things for you, but we are here to support you and guide you and do everything that else that we can to help you move your business into becoming a success. If you have any questions or you want to explore this further, please do get in touch. If you have any questions or you want to explore this further, please do get in touch. I can answer all your questions. I'll happily send you a copy of the contract if you want to go through that and explore that further. Fingers crossed the life will return to normal for everyone soon. But, but while we are all in lockdown, what I want to do is give you the opportunity to sign up for a Clara James Tutoring franchise for just 8575 plus fats. That's a saving of over £1,000. And that offer will remain open for as long as the country's in lockdown. Good luck going forward. Keep safe and no matter whatever you do, I wish you all the very best. Warm wishes and take care. Goodbye.